Thank you for joining me for another UnleashingFreedom.com podcast. This is Richard Wells. A militia officer came sputtering into the camp of General George Washington, attempting to relate the scene of mayhem he'd rushed from. Disputes between various colonial militia groups who were gathering for the siege of Boston had turned into a full-on brawl that officers could not subdue. Not waiting to hear the full report, Washington sprung to his steed and raced into the middle of the melee. Upon arrival at the scene, he leapt from his horse, seized two of the largest men by the throat, and thundered an order to cease the fight. Now, almost instantly, the brawl of nearly a thousand men ended. His commanding presence originated from his character, which gave him a true moral authority over men that transcended mere authority granted by title or position. And while volumes of books have been written about the amazing character of this man, the father of the United States, let us turn to a minute to one of his shortcomings. While Washington's courage and decisive action in the most desperate circumstances led to brilliant military victories, Ironically, his overanalysis as a military commander contributed to several defeats in battle as well. Now, at times, Washington placed too much stock in the opinions and evaluations of his military councils and political leaders. And while his prudence often saved the army to fight another day, his overanalysis of input from the, quote, experts and leaders that clamored for his attention led to some delayed or poor decisions that could have been the difference between success and failure in any given battle. Unfortunately for America, Washington had a strong sense of purpose and a crystal clear vision that helped him overcome and continue to act with courage. Now allow me to add some additional examples of, quote, expert opinions that fortunately were ignored by those who acted instead of overanalyzed. Bob Metcalf, founder of 3Com Corporation, in 1995 said, quote, the Internet will collapse within a year. Thomas Watson, former chairman of IBM, said, quote, I think there's a world market for maybe five computers. And finally, Fred Smith's business professor at Yale University in 1966 gave him a C grade for his senior thesis in which he outlined creating a reliable overnight delivery service. While the professor said it was interesting and well-informed, he declared that the thesis would have to be a feasible idea to earn higher than a C grade. Now, Fred Smith went on to found FedEx anyway. You see, it was his dream and not his professor's. Now, it's been said that when your why is big enough, your how will find a way. If Fred Smith's why wasn't big enough, he would have believed his professor's analysis, but instead, he took a step forward and acted. Had George Washington remained in the unproductive state of considering those who offered the what-ifs or it can't be done's or it's far too risky, well, the war would have been lost. So my question to you is, have you taken the time to find your why in order to act decisively? Or are you caught up in the wheel-spinning behavior of analysis paralysis, yielding to every naysayer and expert opinion out there? Henry David Thoreau once stated, I learned this at least by my experiment, that if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. He will put some things behind and he will pass an invisible boundary. If you have built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now put the foundations under them. And I would add that foundation building is indeed hard work. But if your dream is big enough, it will be the most gratifying work you'll do. Thank you for joining us on this podcast today. Please visit unleashingfreedom.com for personal applications and hear more podcasts about the success principles that unleashed unprecedented freedom in America.